Epic Games is becoming the Amazon of gaming, and the way I see it, nothing is going to stop Epic from owning the entire metaverse. Now, this is an urgent warning about the future of the ownership of a multi-billion dollar industry. Are you ready? Well, hey there, crypto friends. Thanks again for joining me. Now, everyone knows Jeff Bezos has taken over almost everything e-commerce, and now Epic Games has been taking pages from that Amazon playbook. Starting off as an online bookstore, Amazon dominated one niche of e-commerce, and now they are e-commerce, right? But how did it really happen? They did it by buying successful companies until they could do everything in-house. These days, most video game companies have to partner and collab to finish a game, outsourcing tons and tons of different roles. So to see that Epic is positioned to rule the metaverse with an iron fist, let's take a look at this diagram from Matthew Ball's book, The Metaverse. Uh, this helps to make a case for why Epic Games is one of the most important companies on earth when it comes to the metaverse. Now, it would take a lot to completely dominate the metaverse in a way that is similar to James Halliday and how he does it in Ready Player One. But if we look at John Radoff's The Metaverse value chain, there are seven layers, right, to the metaverse. And Epic Games has arguably cornered four of these seven and is closing in on the rest. Epic has created an IP and licensing moat around four of the major layers of the metaverse, including like the experience, the discovery layer, the creator economy, and spatial computing. This doesn't mean a competitor couldn't create an alternative product or service, but it would take at least a decade and probably a billion dollars once uh, to, to be able to actually really compete. So once a user begins working with Unreal Engine, it's unlikely they'd leave the ecosystem uh, even if they developed a career around the technology, right? They wanna stay there. Unlearning system is hard. It's way harder to unlearn things and learn new stuff, right? So uh, that Unreal Engine ecosystem is just sticky. Now, Apple has a kind of similar ecosystem with the iPhone where once a user is comfortable with the hardware, it's difficult for them to uh, you know, switch over, going to like Android, right? So based on the companies acquired and assets built by Epic Games, they have already taken over four of seven of these layers with all this stuff going on. Now, while Epic certainly does not follow the same philosophy as Apple, they do share a similar model for ecosystem creation and acquiring their users. Epic has an operating philosophy that is closer to open source metaverse development, yet it purchases the most important companies that will supply the future of metaverse internet infrastructure. And we've seen that time and time again. A user could uh, seek competing software, use several different services uh, for interoperability, but users will get more value if they become Unreal Engine Maxis, right? So if you're Unreal Engine Maxi, it's easier. Epic Games creates and looks for video game IPs that have a great game design and most importantly, fun game physics that can support different IPs or licenses, right? So if you look at it in a different way, they wanna find games that are not necessarily story or narrative driven so they can insert IPs into that. Having a strong, a strong narrative story would uh, divert from their metaverse strategy of partnering with popular outside brands and IPs. But these acquired video games uh, with metaverse strategies are not gonna come before for these IP licenses, right? But Rocket League, for example, uh, provides the infrastructure for a great vehicle gameplay and fantastic game physics around kind of like flight controls and objects and things with car collisions. But this design does not necess like necessitate a core narrative story, right? There's no real core story there. Now, the physics and game design are the identity, but the IP and background environment are interchangeable, right? So you could put different IPs in there. It wouldn't even make a difference. Another example of like a flexible IP is Fortnite, right? Where they have a very loose story narrative, but a lot of it has to do with uh, you know, having in-game uh, lore that is going on based upon around the IP that is currently in the game, right? So a lot of hardcore players don't necessarily care about that. You know, they care about, you know, gameplay, but we see a lot of people get coming in and being able to purchase their partner skins and be part of these, uh, you know, events. The team in Epic know how to think long-term and their metaverse plays are going to reflect that as well. Utilizing trendy brands to sell more cosmetics to their customers will take a whole new meaning as Epic Games incorporates the same practices into the future metaverse. They have it, right? They have this experience to do so. Now looking at the discovery layer of the metaverse, we see that Epic Games purchase three companies intentionally to create the ultimate system for 3D asset ingestion and discovery. Number one is capturing reality. It's a state-of-the-art software that allows various industries to capture real-world locations for scan, mapping, and 3D digital twin creation of the architecture. With these hundreds of thousands of real-world assets, now that have been scanned using this technology, you, they can now be placed in the ultimate 3D asset library with Quexel 
also an Epic Games you know, company. Now someone could pull value from 3D assets in the same way an individual could purchase a photo from like Getty Images or something, right? So building a database of the world's 3D digital twin assets gives Epic Games an edge with Unreal Engine for sure over everything else, right? If an individual wants to use 3D assets for video games, they could just log in and uh, you know jump into some like Sketchfab and or browse some other 3D uh, assets here uh, that could be used for all, all kinds of different things, not just video games, but for e-commerce, architecture, and other non-gaming industries. So we, we got to realize that the amount of power that this adds to the Unreal e ecosystem and just 3D in general, being able to have these pre-baked metaverse experiences for a 3D first internet. Now, potentially this is comparable to like WordPress for the metaverse, which is huge. Now, another massive layer of the metaverse that Epic just crushes on is the creator economy. And Epic Games acquired these six companies which have varying use cases, but share one constant, making content production as easy as possible for the creators. Now, in-game cheating is a massive issue that not only damages the player's experience, but can cause the loss of millions of dollars in revenue. There's so much money lost through cheating, right? 60% of gamers across the globe have had their multiplayer gaming experience negatively impacted by other players cheating. And 77% are likely to walk away completely from a game if they feel that other players are cheating or getting some sort of unfair advantage. That's why Kamu's Easy Anti-Cheat is a battle tested and used in the largest multiplayer titles. And Epic Games offers this service for free if a game developer is enrolled through their Epic Games online services platform. Huge, right? Now on top of that, over 50 million people use some variation of CAD software like engineers, architects, product designers, things like that, right? Uh, with Epic's Twin Motion, they're solving another pain point here for sales and visualization that addresses the architecture, construction, urban planning, and landscape and professionals kind of side of things, right? Epic Games is uh, larger than just gaming. Like I said, 3D software solves all these problems and things that they're building in the real world will then easily translate into the metaverse pretty soon too. So there's another edge right there. Uh, the metaverse as well as ver uh, various next-gen video games surrounding will have to also abide by laws and compliance when it comes to underage children, right? Engaging in, in, you know, this new internet, this new metaverse. Now that makes their other software super awesome an incredibly valuable tool for developers. They, their KWS service is one of the top parent ver verification systems in the world and future gamers will have to use it uh, in some sort of probably alternative way, right? Some uh, alternative service, but making advertising and technology safe for kids is an important factor for creating a a, a real true metaverse, right? You know, cornering the metaverse here. So super awesome technology, you know, could easily be implemented in something like the, the upcoming Lego metaverse, which is being built by Epic Games. Now this Lego metaverse could be like a big springboard, right? To uh, kids to become educated, in, you know, as like 3D developers, artists, and Lego does a really good job of, you know, of, of creating models for education. So super awesome could definitely be pushed into that technology there. And the Lego metaverse could really give Epic Games a vertical that could directly compete with Roblox and what's going on with their technology. Now on the creative side, we all know that artists have a hard enough time selling their artwork, let alone showcasing it and creating a platform. But ArtStation makes this easy and works kind of like Squarespace for artists. Another Epic Games solution, right? This solves a unique pain point with the art market where uh, you know they usually take some pretty big fees and uh, they don't provide any additional tools for artists. But ArtStation essentially does that. It's one of the most popular uh, art marketplaces right now. Imagine when they start incorporating NFTs and getting ready for the metaverse, things like, you know, virtual property and land, uh, things that require artworks around it. Uh, you can easily build brands around this and uh, ArtStation can help you guys do that, you know, as an artist. So I, I think there could be a lot of things going on right now where you're showcasing uh, art in the, in, uh, w on these kind of platforms and that importance will actually increase as we see more metaverse applications. Now, communication and music are going to be just as important in the metaverse as visual design, right? Now, much of Fortnite's largest play counts occur during a scheduled concert, right? So we see massive concerts with people like Travis Scott and Ariana Grande. And the next generation of artists are going to be creating works in the metaverse as well, which is why the Bandcamp acquisition by Epic was a pretty good stack of their metaverse, uh, you know, creation tools. Because now they have the tools right there that they can embed in future 3D environments, and it, people have already been using it. This creates a vehicle for future music stars to get noticed in a digital experience, right? Like in the metaverse, a 3D experience. Those artists can sell special music or sounds, things can be used in multiple metaverse environments. 
Uh, and you know, with a combination of Bandcamp and House Party Tech, this will bolster music and communication technologies that can be offered through Unreal Engine for metaverse experiences. Now to kind of cap it all off, while the market is still pretty early, avatars and digital identity present a new market opportunity for Epic Games. Avatars will be used in 3D environments, VR, AR, content production, NFTs, healthcare, travel, education, everything, right? And Epic has made a bunch of acquisitions in this category and their suite of tools makes it so simple for developers. Why would anyone go anywhere else? So by the year 2030, Bloomberg Intelligence estimates that the market size of the metaverse will be at least 800 billion dollars. Epic Games is the center of the creation of that multi-billion dollar metaverse, but that does not mean that Epic has a monopoly on the metaverse just yet. But if artists, developers, distributors, marketers, professionals, everyone getting in on the metaverse, if they're using Unreal Engine tools provided by Epic Games, it does give them a boost in having a foothold for the future of the metaverse. The traditional market recognizes Epic Games as a 3D technology and gaming publishing company, but really they should probably be viewed as more of like a metaverse as a service company, which is what they're looking to do with this massive bag of tools in their suite. The whole time we were looking at Facebook Meta as the big bad corporate entity that was going to take over the metaverse, but it may very well be Epic Games that rugs us all in the end. Now, so far we don't see any signs that Epic will be an evil IOI style overlord, but stay vigilant friends, because you never know, we might need to heed the call of battle for the future of the metaverse itself. Till next time, stash that crypto friends.